Your attention, please. Passengers holding tickets on the Coast to Coaster for San Francisco and everywhere in between, your train is now boarding on truck seven. All aboard. New York, New York, a wonderful town. The dogs is up and the batteries down. The bees fall by in a hole in the ground. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. The favorite place is to visit are so many. I told the guidebook say. and we're taking the train coast to coast. Yes, yes, my pet. Nothing's too good for you. Oh. <laughs> and besides, now that we're finally in the money, why not? Oh, the <laughs> smartest thing you ever did was selling the business. Oh, no, my love. The smartest thing I ever did was marrying you. <laughs> oh, Nigel. <laughs> I'll do anything for you, dear. Anything for you mean everything to me you know that i'd go anywhere for your smile anywhere for your smile everywhere i'd see would you make my tea anything go to france with me Anything. Sing and dance with me. Anything. Never disagree. Well, uh, let me see. I'll risk everything for your kiss. Everything for your mean. Everything to me. I do anything, anything for you. Anything for you, dear, anything for you mean everything to me. I know that I'd go anywhere for your smile, anywhere for your smile, everywhere I see. Would you cook and clean? Anything. Oh, would you be my queen? Anything. Oh, would you clown me king? Anything. Not be cross or mean? Well, let me see. is a wonderful town. I grew up here. There was always something to do. At night, we'd go dancing, and when it got too hot, the firemen would come around, open up the fire hydrants, and we all got wet. I remember those times, too, when it was all one big city, east side and the west side. <laughs> Boy! 
boys and girls together. We would sing and waltz while Tony played the organ on the sidewalks of New York. and girls together, me and Mamie O'Rourke, we finished the lights fantastic on the sidewalks of New York. Excuse me, there will be no hanky-panky in the train station. Get a room. <laughs> Your attention, please. Passengers holding tickets for Nyack, Buffalo, and Niagara Falls. Your train is now boarding on track four. All aboard! I'll go home and, I'll go home and get my panties. You go home and get your scanners, and away we'll go. Shuffle, shuffle like to Buffalo. To Niagara in a sleeper, there's no honeymoon that's cheaper, and the train goes slow. Oh, 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 o
parted. We'll be right back where we started. Just to travel the long, singing a song side by side. Through all kinds of weather, maybe the sky will fall. As long as we're together, it doesn't matter at all. When they've all had their quarrels and parted, we'll be the same as we started, just to travel along, singing a song side by side. Didn't I tell you two, if I ever caught you in a passenger again, I'd lock you up so tight they'd have to pump the sunshine to Now you're going to lock up for sure. But, Mr. Dillon, what about the cash shipment? Aren't you supposed to stay with it till armored car picks it up? What cash shipment? What are you talking about? The one for the, the Philadelphia Mint. You know, the million dollars in ones, fives, tens, and twenties? Hey, that's top secret stuff. How do you two know about that? Oh, Mr. Dillon, it's all up and down the line. Yeah, all hobos aren't as honest as we are, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I got to stay with the cash. <laughs> you do that then. Billy and I will enjoy our little repast and mosey on. And Mr. D, if it ever comes up, we'll swear you never left that cash out of your sight. Not even for a minute. Okay, but if you're still here when I get back, we know we're going oh, yeah, in. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bold appetite. <laughs> you know, we did a good thing oh. getting Jed to the convention. Yeah. Well, the hard part is going to be packing that car all the way to San Francisco. Right now, that refrigerator car is a group of cars going to Chicago to pick up the swinging beef. Swing, swing and beef. beef! Come on! We've got to sew him in a sack and hang him before somebody steps on him. Well, good morning, sisters. Good, good morning. morning. I trust you are enjoying your trip. Oh, oh indeed, indeed we are. are. And are you traveling with Father John? Good heavens, no. He's an Episcopalian. <laughs> your attention, please. Now arriving on track three, the westbound coast to coaster from New York. Welcome to Chicago! Hey, that's my hometown! Chicago, Chicago, that's our town. Chicago, Chicago, I will show you around. I love it, at your bottom dollar you'll lose the blues in Chicago. Chicago, the town that Billy Sunday could not shut down. On State Street, that great street, I just want to say, they do things they don't do on Broadway, say. They have the time, the time of their life. I saw a man, he danced with his wife in Chicago. Chicago, my hometown. Chicago, Chicago, that part of town. Chicago, Chicago, I will show you around. I love it, bet your bottom dollar you'll lose the blues in Chicago. Chicago, the town that's really Sunday, On Street, that great street, I just want to say, they do things they don't do on Broadway. Time of their life. I saw a man 
and he danced with his wife in Chicago, Chicago, my hometown. you, Tom? Where would you go if you had your pick? Oh, I don't know. I've been to some great places, but... But? Well, what? you know, I've got a real hankering to see places I've never been. Far away places with strange sounding names. Far away over the sea, those far away places with strange sounding names are calling, calling me, going to China or maybe Siam, I want to see for myself, those far away places with strange sounding names I've been reading about in a book. I start getting restless whenever I hear the whistle of a train. I pray for the day I can get underway and look for those castles in Spain. Ah, they call me a dreamer. Well, maybe I am, but I know what I'm burning. To see those far away places with strange sounding names calling, calling me, calling, 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 calling me. Hey, Bertha, you are looking good. Oh, you think you're funny, don't you, Tom? Listen, Toots, I've got an extra pass here, and you look like you could use a change of scenery. Boy, are you right. Well, listen, how about you go grab a change of clothes and catch the Dixie Limited? You could be back in four days, and nobody will be any wiser. Uh, you're on. Ah! Oh. Excuse me. I'm so confused. How do I get to Biloxi? Just follow those people. Your attention, please. Passengers holding tickets for Biloxi, Mobile, and New Orleans. Now boarding on truck four. All aboard.
Willie! Willie! We lost him! What do you mean, lost him? The refrigerator car is gone! Ah! Ah! Any luck yet to find that refrigerator car? Not for sure. They may have put it on a repair track. Well, they'll keep it cold and get it out of there in a hurry. Nobody wants to let thousands of dollars worth of beef go bad. Right. Well, you, you go look to the north, and, and then I'll go look to the south, and I'll meet you right back here in one hour.
Refrigerator car has been repaired and attached to our train going to New Orleans. New Orleans? Well, what are we waiting for? We have a train to catch. And away, away we, we go. go. and me gonna put my shadows behind me give my inhibitions the axe and tomorrow morning you'll find me on the other side of the tracks on the other side of that line where the life is fancy and free gonna sit and fan on my fat divan while the butler buds the tea but for now I'm facing the fences and I can't afford to relax when the whole caboodle commences on the other side of the tracks. So I'm off and running over the rail. I'm going gunning after the quail. Off and running, sending my mail to the great big world on the other side, the great big world on the farther side. The great big world on the other side of the tracks To the great big world An open way To the great big world on the other side Of the tracks
but it ain't over yet. you two. Oh. I told you I'd never want to see you in a passenger again. You're off. Oh, please, Mr. Dillon. Is this any way the railroad treats ticket-holding passengers? Ticket-holding? Yeah, now, you ain't gonna believe this, Mr. Dillon. It's incredible. Well, it's amazing. Amazing? Incredible? Amazing? Yeah. You're right. I'm never gonna believe it. You're off. No, 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 please, Mr. No. Dillon. No, no, will you tell you? No. It all started in upstate New York. Ted was our hobo king. He was uh, nominated at the National Hobo Convention, and he was supposed to go to the convention this year in San Francisco to crown the new hobo king. So what's that got to do with being paid passengers? Well, well you see, Jed asked us to help him. You see, he wasn't feeling no. too well. In fact, he wasn't looking too well either. Mm, not good at all. No, and no, 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 about no. the third day, he got to feeling worse. And he just knew he wasn't going to make it. And he did. And now he's in that great hobo jungle up in the sky. <laughs> well, we promised to be there for him, so we just decided that, well, we'd take him the rest of the way ourselves and give him a big hobo send-off at the convention. We managed to sneak him into a refrigerator car, and we've been tracking it ever since. So, you got a stiff on yeah. ice. Mm -hmm. What's that got to do with tickets? You got some tall explaining to do. All right, now, walk this way. <coughs> Shit! <coughs> now, why are you in New Orleans with first-class tickets, and how'd you get them? Well, now, Mr. Dell, I told you you ain't gonna believe this. Try me. Well, like I told you, we put Jed up in that refrigerator car you know, to keep him fresh. Well, the car got broke, and they had to take it off the track. Then what? Well, uh, then we started looking for it. We tracked that car to New Orleans, mm -hmm. but it wasn't in New York. So we, we knew, we found out then it had been taken off. And there it was, on a repair track siding, behind a gorgeous private car. A car with Willie's initials in gold on the side. W-R-H. <laughs> Willie Randolph Hobo. W-R-H. Hell, that's William Randolph Hearst. Biggest newspaper publisher out west. Owned half the papers on the coast. He lives in a castle somewhere in California. Well, when we saw my initials, we figured it was a sign. Mm -hmm. A sign? From Jeff. So, what we decided to do is that we tiptoed around, and then I gripped the latch, and then I crawled up inside of the car to look around, and, well, we were going to look all over, but <laughs> I only made it as far as the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was locked, so we fixed us some breakfast. That's when I spotted the wine cabinet. We were just finishing eating when this huge man in a gold bathrobe comes in. Carrying a shotgun, wanting to know what the hell we were doing there. Yeah, we got, well, we thought it was all over, that we'd spend the next six months in jail. Yeah, so with nothing to lose, we told him the whole story. Well, he put down that shotgun, opened a soda for himself, and said, Gentlemen, I applaud your wine selection. And I applaud your creativity. Yeah. 
Now, Mr. Dillon, what happened next was, well, you see, he got hold of his conductor, and, and, and they flagged down the next inbound train, and then he wrote us out a couple of passes, and now, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here we are. Make that work. Oh. I'm taking you two down to the city jail and book you in for the night. Mr. Dillon, no, Mr. Dillon. we don't know where that hey. refrigerator car is gone, what? and we can't lose Jed now. Mm -mm. Oh, Jed is dead. How can no buy his head? He lived and died as free as man can be. Man can be. Wherever train tracks lead. Answer every need. No finder man than he was ever born. Ever born. Poor Jet is dead. No halo on his head. Be living in, in the whole land, land of plenty. Land of plenty. When they put out his gates in stone, there are some that still aren't known. We'll never know the day the king was born, king was born. For Jed is dead, yes, really, truly dead. Now he's on his way to final rest, final rest. He's been traveling in style, and we've watched him all the while. And now it's time to meet the final test. Final test. Poor Jed. Poor Jed. Please, Mr. Dillon, you can't lock us up. We've got to stay with that reefer car and Jed. We've come too far to lose him now. I must be out of my head, but I'm going to let you go. So go find a boxcar now and sleep it off. I'll check the westbound train list. Oh, oh thank you, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Come on, boys. What a hunk. Don't you just love a man in uniform? I prefer a man in show business. I'm going to be a star, you know. Really? Oh, yes, Mr. Goldstone. My patient is taking me to Hollywood to become a very big star. How is that old geezer going to make you a star? Mr. Goldstone is very famous. He used to be a very big director in Hollywood, and before that, he produced the Goldstone Follies in New York. Excuse me, do you know where we are? Oh, sure, kid, let me take a look here. Nursey, can you help us? I forgot my glasses. Oh, oh, I can't seem to find it. Maybe Mr. Goldstone knows. Mr. Goldstone, Mr. Goldstone! Not Goldstone, I can't afford a lawsuit. He's part of the tour. Oh, thank God. This group is driving me nuts. Oh, you think you've got problems, honey. You just have to keep the chicks happy. Yes. I'm so tired of pushing this old man around. I could just die. We'll be lucky if one of them doesn't keel over before we get to San Francisco. Maybe this senior tour thing isn't such a hot idea after all. Well, it's too late to change now. So go check and find out where we are, and I'll go round up the troops. Hi there, big boy. Can you give me a hand? I would love to. Not there, Sonny. Oh. 
Goldstone. Settle down now, Mr. Goldstone. You know you shouldn't get too excited. With a nurse like this, I shouldn't get excited. Go figure. Oh! Oh! oh. Where, are you going? Where are you going? I don't care. Mm. Norman, get out of my way! What? I said, Norman, get out of my way! Who? Norman! Wait! Up! Well, come on! It's not a race! Yeah, I always have to bring up the rear. You know, Bernie will never change. Remember when he was director at the Follies? Yeah, we were all after him then. <laughs> <laughs> well, he still got it. <laughs> you see that hussy with Bernie? She thinks she's so hot. I used to look just like that. You never look like that. I most certainly did. <laughs> well, you don't now. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm not dead yet, and I'm not going to let that tart come between me and my man. After all, I'm a Zigfield girl. We're all Zigfield girls, and we still got a lot of kick left. Yeah. They are what they are. Isn't it sad? Ain't it a pity? They used to be fun. And I am told they were quite pretty. But now, take a look at each and every wrinkle. Still, in the eyes I see a little twinkle.
Did you think you couldn't even get up? Listen, girl, oh. there's a lot of things I can still do. Oh, you know Mr. what I mean? Oh, oh. Yeah? oh my goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> another delay. Oh, relax, Nigel. Apparently one of the cars had to be taken off for repairs and we're only a half an hour behind schedule. I don't care. I paid top dollar for this tour and I demand... Oh, I am sick and tired of hearing you talk about nothing but money. Now, wait a minute. People like us shouldn't be putting up with the working class who don't even have any... The working class? The working class? It wasn't that long ago that you and I were the working class. What do you mean? 
I just sold the biggest produce company in all of Great Britain. I'm a billionaire. Nigel, Nigel, Nigel. Remember when we were first married? You had one fruit stand. I loved you then. I love you now. No more, no less. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, me love. Oh. I do get carried away every now and then. <laughs> yes, I remember. I've got a lovely bunch of country nuts. I see them all a standing in a row. A big one, small one, some as big as your head. And give them a twist, a flick of the wrist. That's what me showman said. I've got a lovely bunch of country nuts. Every ball you throw will make me rich. There stands me wife, the idol of me life. Sing and roll and roll and roll and many a bitch. Sing and roll and roll and roll and many a bitch. Sing and roll and roll and roll and many a bitch. Roll and roll and roll, roll and roll and roll. Sing and roll and roll and roll and many a bitch. We had a lovely bunch of coconuts. There they were standing in a row. Big one, small one, some as big as your head. Give them a twist, a flick of your wrist, that's what the showman said. We had a lovely bunch of coconuts. Every ball you threw, it made us rich. There stands me wife. They I love me life, sing and roll a roll a ball a penny a pitch. Sing and roll a roll a ball a penny a pitch. Sing and roll a roll a ball a penny a pitch. Roll a roll a ball, roll a roll a ball, sing and roll a roll a ball a penny a pitch. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. Roll a ball, a ball, roll a ball, a ball. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. You are a love, you are. <laughs> Our attention, please. Now arriving on track nine, the westbound coast to coaster. Welcome to Kansas City. tired of this scene over and over again. What scene? You know, the coming and going. Here they come, there they go. What's it all about? What's it all about? It's the excitement, the romance of travel. Oh, travel is my life. Every rolling stone gets 
Sentimental journeys. You don't know what? I don't know about sentimental journeys. That's so. How come? Well, there was this baggage man on the B&O. He used to stop by every time he touched at Kansas City. And we made a date to meet at the state oh. fair. And so? And so, we did. Really? <gasps> Don't tell me the lights are shining any place but there. We will dance the hoochie coochie. I will be your tootsie wootsie. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at the fair.
so happy that I took the train back instead of flying from New York. I never knew the train travel could be such fun. Oh, I'll tell you. Miss Barbara, ma'am, I've lived on a ranch all my life. I know a prime filly when I see one. <laughs> oh, you sweet talking thing, you. No, nothing like that could get you everywhere. <laughs> Barbara! Oh, what are you doing with that cow hat? Oh, now, don't get upset, Father. You said this trip would be educational. <laughs> and he is. Oh, so handsome. It just... It isn't just a question of not knowing what to do. I've known what's right and wrong since I've been ten. I've heard a lot of stories, and I suppose that they are true, about how girls are put upon by men. I know I mustn't fall into the pit, but when I'm with a fellow, I forget. I'm just a girl who can't say no. I'm in a terrible fix. I always say, come on, let's go. Just when I ought to say next. When a person tries to kiss a girl, I know she ought to give his face a smack. But as soon as someone kisses me, I somehow sort of want to kiss him back. I'm just a fool when lights are low. I can't be prissy and wait. I'm not the type that can wait. How can I be what I ain't? I can't say no. Now, what are you going to do when a fellow gets flirty and starts to talk pretty? What are you going to do? Supposing that he says that your lips are like cherries, roses, or berries, what are you going to do? Supposing that he says that you're sweeter than cream, and he's gonna have cream or joy, what are you going to do when he talks that way? Spit in his eye! Wait a minute, Father. Just listen for a moment. There's something you need to know. Now, Sydney and I have been getting to know each other ever since we left New York City. And, well, last night, he couldn't sleep and I couldn't sleep, and we were both out on the platform looking at the moon. And, well, he asked me to marry him. Oh, but he thinks he has to ask you first. Is that right, mister? You and my babs were out on the platform. Last night, all last night. And you only talked. You weren't honeymooning or anything like that, were you? No, nothing like that. Well, and you want to marry her? But you just met her. Well, yeah, that's right, but I do. I just, well, I don't know how to put this, but there's something about your daughter, her, her eyes, her complexion, the way she holds her head. Okay, okay, I get the picture. No, I don't think you do. Well, what are you trying to say? What I'm saying is that the next stop, Oklahoma City, 
we will go to the county house and we'll get a license. Judge, there's an old family friend. He'll marry us right there. And then I'll have my private railroad car hooked onto this train. And then we can go on to the West Coast so Babs can see the Golden Gate. Yeah, but what about me? Oh. <laughs> well, you're, come on back to Oklahoma with us. You're welcome to stay at the ranch as long as you like. You have a big ranch? Oh, about 20,000 acres. <laughs> well, you usually run 1,500 head of prime beef cattle. Four ponies? And do you own the oil rights? Sure do. Congratulations, Barbara. <laughs> My bad is not only going to have a husband, she'll have a rich one. <laughs> How do you think it'll turn out? Hey, with 20,000 acres? Great. Great! Hey, Sam, didn't you ride in the baggage cars for a long time before you settled down? Yeah, we all rode the cars. If I were single, I'd still be out there. But I'm glad I made the switch. Still, every now and then, I remember those warm summer nights going across the desert. You could get a whiff of the sage every now and then. Once in a while, you'd hear a coyote holding half the moon. But the wind had to be just right before you could hear him. Away out here, they got a name, wind and rain and fire. The rain is Tess, the fire is Joe, and they call the wind Mariah. Mariah blows the stars around and sends the clouds a flying. Mariah makes the mountain sound like folks were up there dying. Mariah. And the sun was always shining But then one day I left my girl I left her far behind me And now I'm lost So oh, girls are lost Not even God can find me Arise! Yeah. 
before tomorrow. But we still got to find a way to get him out of that refrigerator according to the convention. So I guess we almost made it. Well, I got the first part figured out. When the crane stops, they'll shut down the hard freeze so the inspectors can inspect it. Yeah, but we still got to come up with a plan on how to get him out of that car before they unload it. But I am just too tired to think anymore now. <laughs> Show me a way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago, and it went right to my head. Wherever I may roam, over land or sea or foam, you will always hear me singing this song. Show, Show me the way to go home. I'll show you oh. the way to go home, right into the who's guy. And this time, I'm not kidding. Now, please, Mr. Dillon, just a few more hours and see us through this. You mean you did it? You got him here? Sure, sure did. did. But we still got to find a way to get him to the park. You see, he's awful heavy till he gets all thawed out. You know, I've been thinking about that ever since you told me what you were doing. I got a pickup parked at my sister's house. I think we can work it out. <laughs> what time's a reefer car moving? Well, we don't know for sure. They didn't have a final list last time we checked. But the train number we got was number 94. Okay, I'll make sure we meet it. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. You know, it's not easy being a cop. No. With constabulary duties to be done. To, to be, be done. A policeman's life is not a happy one. Happy one. When the baggage thieves are working in the station. Picking up the travelers' cases one by one. One by one. one. And then mingling with the ticket-holding travelers. A policeman's life is not a happy one. Happy one. They are running relay races through the station. Holding tight to their purloined ill-gotten loot. Gotten loot. But you really can't tell one from the other. You can only haul a staff. But, but you can't, can't shoot. But occasionally you can help a weary traveler with a bed, a meal, and coffee with a bun. With, with a, a bun. bun. Though it really doesn't happen very often, a policeman's life can be a happy
shining uniform. You love any man, period. You even love Mr. Goldstone. Never treats me sweet and gentle the way he should. I got it bad, and that ain't good. My poor heart. Okay, Glenn, next time we'll give you a line to say, gee. <laughs> Your attention, please. Now departing on track three, the westbound coast to coaster to the golden state of Kuka, Kuka, <clears throat> California.
right, Nursey. We're almost there. Uh, why don't you go get your clothes changed and I'm gonna make you a star. Oh, Mr. Gossip, thank you. You're the best. <laughs> you got that right. way you do, darling. The same way you do. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, sisters. <laughs> uh, not yet, my dear. <laughs> oh, sorry, my love. <laughs> Your attention, please. Now arriving on track eight, the northbound coast to coaster from New York and everywhere in between. Welcome to...
wonderful day like today. I defy any cloud to appear in the sky. Dare any raindrop to plop in my eye on a wonderful day like today. On a beautiful morning like this, when the sun is as big as a yellow balloon, even the sparrows are singing in tune on a wonderful morning like this. On a morning like this, I could kiss everybody. I'm so full of love and goodwill. Let me say furthermore, I'd adore everybody to come and dine. The pleasure's mine, and I will pay the bill. May I take this occasion to say that the whole human race should go down on its knees, show that we're grateful for mornings like these, for the world's in a wonderful way. On a wonderful day like today. you in San Francisco day after tomorrow. You get Jed out of the refrigerator car, you put him in my truck. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dillon. Jed's going to make it to the convention. We couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, you've got to come to the convention with us to see Jed off. Right, and see our new king crown, too. <laughs> Sailors for sailor rent, rooms to let 50 cents. No food, no food, no pets. Ain't got no cigarettes. Two hours of bullshit brews. By the feet of 12 points. I'm a man of means by no means. King of the road. Third box car midnight train, just a station train. Old worn out suits and shoes. I don't pay no union dues and smoke. Old stogies I have found. Sure, but not too big around. Man of means by no means, king of the road. I know every engineer on every train, all of their children and all of their names. Every handout in every town, and every dock that ain't locked with no wild around. Taylor for sailor and lose to that 50 cents. No phone, no food, no pets. Ain't got no cigarettes, but I'm Two hours of food and fruit by the day for twelve more. I'm a man of means by no means, king of the road, king of the road, king of the road. Your attention, please. Now arriving on track one, the westbound coast to coaster. End of the line. Welcome to the city by the Golden Gate, San Francisco. San Francisco, open your golden gate. You let no stranger wait outside. 
outside your door. San Francisco, here is your wandering one. Say no wonder no more. Other places only make me love you best. Tell me you're the heart of all the golden west. San Francisco, welcome me home again. I'm coming home to go romance no more. San Francisco, open your golden gate. You let no stranger wait outside your door. San Francisco, here is your wandering one. Say no wonder no more. Other places only make me love you less. Tell me you're the heart of all the gold. Jed got to his last convention, and you were crowned new king of the hobo. Cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you know, Dylan turned out to be a pretty decent guy. Yeah, but I wish he hadn't made his promise that we wouldn't ride the rails again. He'll never know. <laughs> Attention, please. Now boarding on track 17, the Coast to Coaster, heading for Cucamonga! I've always wanted to say that. But seriously, folks, now boarding for New York City and all points in between. All aboard! Thank you. 